take two of these. Good morning, everyone. Just waiting for a few more attendees to join. Thank you very much for joining this press conference webinar this morning, and we're hoping it will go off without a hitch. I'm City Councillor Paula Fletcher, and I'm the City Councillor for Toronto Danforth, which has six business improvement areas. And since the COVID-19 pandemic started, I have been working with the BIAs who have been very concerned about the fate of their members along all of the main streets. And just to remind everybody, the main streets here are the Danforth, Gerard, Queen, Pape, Foxwell, Broadview. There are so many small businesses that are the backbone of our communities and they are the backbone of our neighborhoods. There has been great fear in the small business community that their plight has not been registered at the levels of government which it needs to be. So while the federal government has initiated a number of things, uh, there is some concern that doesn't go far enough, but today's press conference really focuses on the requirements that are being asked for from the provincial government in light of the fact that tomorrow, Thursday, April 16th is what we'll call D-Day. It's the day that landlords can take back the property from any tenant that hasn't paid the rent for April. And there are many, many businesses that are concerned they haven't been able to pay and they don't know what their fate will be. So this is really a difficult moment. There's a lot of stress, there's a lot of tension, there's a lot of concern. And we really do want our ward, Toronto Danforth, to be open for business that all of the city to be open for business and that small businesses can survive and thrive in this neighborhood. And I'm going to ask uh, Philip Kosef, he is with the Broadview Danforth BIA and he's a member of the board and he has a business iPro Realty. To Philip, can you give us a few ideas about why this is such an important day for us and um, for you and what you're hoping for there? Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Paula. Uh, you know, a lot of our uh, small businesses are, are terrified right now. It's, uh, it's been five weeks of the government imposed shutdown um, with most of uh, our businesses closed. Uh, there's little or no revenue coming in and many of those small businesses struggled to pay April's rent. And we're hearing that even more of them are, are worried about being able to cover May's rent and, and beyond that. Um, while there's certainly been, you know, some support from the federal government, there's, there's a lot of gaps in that support as it relates to small businesses. Uh, and actually, with your help, with Councillor Fletcher's help, a few weeks ago, we launched the, uh, the Do Not Turn Out the Lights campaign, where we're asking for two really critical things from the uh, provincial government. The first one, as you mentioned, is the, is the lockouts, which, which uh, legally could start as, as early as 12.01 uh, tomorrow morning. And, and that's really key. Commercial businesses need to be able to sleep at night and know that they can't, they're not going to fear losing their spaces because they weren't able to make rent because of the pandemic. They don't have the same protection that the residential uh, tenants uh, do. And so, so that's really a big thing that would allow our businesses to be at ease a little bit. And then the second one is, is a rent bailout. Um, rent relief uh, would, would go a long way because cash flow is one of the biggest things that we are hearing businesses are, are struggling with. Loans are great, deferrals are great, but they are just that. They're just debt that's being pushed off until the future. And so while there's a lot of landlords that are being sympathetic and are, are working with our businesses, 
they too have mortgages to pay and, and you know, not all commercial mortgages are being deferred like residential mortgages. And so landlords equally are, are concerned about how they're going to pay their bills if they don't have tenants who are able to make uh, their rent. So those are, those are the two things that we're hearing from our members that would make, um, really make a big, a big difference. Thank you so much, Philip. And let's hear now from Dave Watson, who is proprietor of Eastbound Brewery on Queen Street and a member of the Riverside Board of Directors. Dave, can you tell us why you are really worried about tomorrow and what you're seeing on Queen Street East? Certainly, thanks Paula. Being on the board of directors with the Riverside BIA, I've spoken with a lot of the businesses in our area, and we've seen a lot of the same stories over and over again. Just like Philip, a lot of the businesses in our area are terrified, and it's because there's anywhere from, um, you know, it's 100% it's loss in revenue to, you know, 50% loss in revenue. There's not many people making it much more than that. And with 50% loss in revenue or more, uh, and fixed expenses staying relatively the same, the biggest portion of those fixed expenses is rent and having to still pay rent is something that's going to put businesses under. Now, small businesses in our community are something that give back to the community. They make big investments in our community and without that support from the provincial government, it's going to be something where many of them do go out of business for good. We're just trying to stay in business, but many of us do need that support for provision from provincial government, just not to close our doors. So the time to act on this is now it's something that's, uh, as you mentioned, tomorrow is the first day that they can start to evict tenants for um, not paying April rent. In two weeks' time, May rent checks are due. Now, this takes a long time. This is a process that we've been working with the federal government for different relief measures, but relief measures don't turn around that quickly, and it's something that needs revision over time. So we're very concerned as a BIA that there's nothing been done about rent so far. It's the most critical expense right now. Um, and it's something that uh, is going to make uh, a big impact if we can actually get some relief on this. Uh, we need our businesses, our small businesses in our community. We need them to stay alive. And all it is now is just about survival. Thanks so much, Dave. And now Peter Tabins, MPP for Toronto Danforth. You've been in touch with many of these small businesses and heard the impact of the pandemic on Main Street. Uh, could you tell us some of your thoughts about getting a, getting assistance from the provincial government, please. Well, thanks very much, Paula, and good morning, everyone. Uh, this is a critical time for Ontario and for small businesses across the province. We're in a situation, as my colleagues have set out, where many businesses face having their premises padlocked tomorrow uh, and losing those businesses. It's time for the provincial government to step up. The Premier has the power in his hands to protect these businesses, to stop their devastation, to protect our main streets. There's no question that federal programs have been welcome, um, but as my colleagues have said, and as I've heard from many other small businesses, the reality is that many don't qualify under the current programs. And even if they did qualify, the provisions would not actually help them, would put them in a more difficult position in the months to come. The Premier is in a position to take a number of steps. These are ones that have been put forward by the Ontario NDP and which I've been putting forward personally in the community and directly to the Premier. And first is that we need a four month moratorium on commercial evictions. Give those businesses the breathing space so they don't have to worry every day about whether they're actually going to be able to stay in their premises. Uh, we need a program of rent subsidies at least for three months. 75% uh, of rent subsidized up to a cap of $10,000 per month and a freeze on utility payments. These things would give stability to the businesses and help them deal with their cash flow problems as was outlined. There's no question that if we don't act, these businesses will be devastated, so many of them, and our ability to get back on our feet when this crisis is passed will be profoundly undermined. We need the businesses to survive. They employ so many people. People are counting on those businesses to be there to give them a paycheck in the months to come. So we need to keep them standing. The Premier is very fond of saying that Ontario is open for business. Well, now is time to make that real. Now is time to act, step up, put these things in place, and keep our businesses alive. Thank you.
Thank you, Peter. Uh, we're going to go to questions from the attendees, and we have quite a few people. If you would like to ask a question, please put up your hand, and I will acknowledge you. And I see Mark McAllister with a question. Mark, I'm bringing you in. Please. Hello. Oh, I can't. Sorry, sorry about that. Hi. But uh, <laughs> and apologies for the picture. Apparently. Um, <laughs> <laughs> better um, days. Better days. Mark. Indeed. Um, if you would, uh, I know uh, Peter. You just spelled out exactly what uh, what you think the province should do. However, if I could hear from uh, from Philip or from Dave, um, why you think. Uh, four months would do the trick if in fact that's what you are calling for and uh, what you expect and I know uh, Philip you mentioned it how do the landlords then fend for themselves if in fact there's a moratorium on rent Philip you want to take start please perfect thanks thanks Mark yeah and I think that that's why you know while we're asking for that that you know that restriction on the the um, the evictions. It has to be coupled with the rent relief or the bailout because those landlords. It's not it's not fair just to to push that burden then down to the landlords because we have to remember a lot of the landlords that are on these small streets or small businesses themselves. These are independent families that have have bought them. They're not big corporations with deep pockets that can you know carry the expenses. I was talking to I, I run. Um, two of our locations and uh, the family that that owns the location in the junction they have a couple of buildings it's it's long family uh, buildings they they actually live in one so it's their residence as well but she said you know our expenses are still about seventy thousand a year just in taxes and you know and the mortgages that, that attribute to the commercial side so that rent relief is actually extremely critical for both um, so that's that 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 has to come as well. So I hope that uh, sort of answers the the question. Well, and in addition to that, I mean, four months. Um, you had asked in your question as well. Four months is a start. That's something I don't think we see this going on for any less than four months at this point in time. Beyond that, it will be a matter of adjusting and uh, and speaking with the province about uh, what measures might be need to take and you know have to be taken after that. But four months is something that's, uh, that's just a start. That's a minimum that we're looking at right now in terms of the impact that this is going to have on small business. And without that kind of time frame, we're looking at uh, more businesses closing for good. Yeah. Because Mark, also we're looking at, you know, if, if the, if, you know, in another 60 or, you know, 30 to 60 days, we're back in business, that's going to be a very slow ramp up. It's not like we're going to be able to, you know, instantly open the taps and everyone's going to go back to spending the way they were. There's going to be a period of time to ramp business up again, again, confidence back out in the, in, in the community. So yeah, to, to David's point, it's, you know, four months is, is kind of going to be the minimum that we need in order to get through at the best case scenario, and if it goes on beyond that, then then you know we'll have to have to advocate for some additional assistance. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I have a question that was sent in from Karen Lieberman, Global. And eventually, when businesses are allowed to reopen, there's a fear that many just won't be able to reopen along the Danforth and the other main streets. If there's no help from the province, what is the worst case scenario for these popular neighborhoods in Toronto? Who wants to start with that? Well, I could probably start with that, Paula. I think the worst case scenario is, is devastating. These neighborhoods won't be what we are, are used to uh, having. Um, there was a report that was put out uh, you know, just a couple of weeks ago um, by the CFIB, the Canadian Federation of Independent Business. And they did, they, in, the, in their survey, they asked uh, small businesses if there was a 50% reduction in sales, in your sales, um, you know, how long could you stay in business? And 25% of those businesses said they couldn't surpass a month and 80% of them said they couldn't uh, survive beyond six months. So that just tells you, and, and a lot of our businesses are already seeing between 70 and 100% loss. So, you know, that's, that's telling us literally within months, we could, we could be losing these small businesses. Thank you, Dave. Yes, I mean, the, the ripple effects on small businesses closing will be huge. The impact on neighborhoods is gonna be felt for a long time. 
this is something where small businesses do give back to the community in a big way. Many of them invest back in the community. And it's less about making a profit than it is about paying the employees, paying the owners, and, and also doing something that's going to be goods and services in that community that are valued. So without that, we're going to have uh, just a, a major lack of services and goods for the different communities that make them attractive to live in. Beyond that, a lot of small businesses do take a couple of years of planning before they open. So it's not like we're going to have vacant properties with a bunch of people lined up to move in. This is going to be held for a long time if, if businesses do have to close for good. Um, and, uh, sorry. Paula, yes. do you mind if I just, yeah, I'd just like to yep. kick in there as well. There's no doubt that my colleagues have said the, the businesses provide amenities, they give back to the communities, but they also provide a lot of employment. You go around this community, you will find that the people who work in the restaurants, who work in the shops, they live many, many, many of them locally. So if we lose yeah. these businesses, we're losing a big chunk of employment as well. The, the ripple effects are huge throughout the community. Yeah. Thank you, Peter. Uh, we have a question now from Dave Nickel. Um, Dave, please. Uh, hi, I wanted to ask uh, the, um, um both 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 Dave and, and and Philip do you have a sense uh as of tomorrow of the number of businesses that are that are are in your uh, in, in your BIA areas that are actually going to be risk of being shut down right then and there is it, it sounds like a lot but do you have a have you been keeping track of that uh, so I it, it, when when it comes to to the lockouts, the interesting thing about the way that the law works is that the landlord doesn't actually have to give uh, that notice to the tenant. So the reality is some of those tenants, and I think that's why there's so much anxiety is that they don't even know, is my, is my landlord going to come tomorrow or next week or whatever, and I'm just going to show up and, and I can't get into my space anymore. So we don't, we, to, to be honest, we actually don't have a sense of, you know, what landlords uh, out there, I, I hope, I hope none of them will actually exercise that right. I think, um, you know, we're certainly seeing on our end lots of messages from our members that vary uh, across the board with their discussions uh, with their landlords. Some landlords are, of course, sympathetic. They're offering, um, you know, discounts or deferrals or using last month's rent. Um, some of them are being very, very adamant that rent is due. This is a lease. Um, I have my own expenses to pay and, and they want that paid, but uh, I haven't heard of anybody actually been threatened yet to be locked out, but the reality is they don't have to give that notice. And so the landlord would just choose to exercise that right if they, if they wanted to. Um, one thing that we are, uh, I could mention is that we're, we're working on today that we're going to be launching through the, uh, the BIAs amongst the, the city as we are putting together a little survey to ask some of those questions you know, which businesses were, were able to pay rent, which ones are, are fearing May and a couple of other uh, questions. So we should uh, be able to have some of those uh, results later this week or, or uh, early next week to share. Just to we go have, ahead, Dave. Yeah, I mean, within Riverside BIA, we have 107 businesses. And I think one of the biggest problems is inconsistency and uncertainty around how landlords will deal with the issue, something where uh, it's case by case. One to the next, it depends on your relationship with the landlord. And that's, that's just not acceptable when it comes to small businesses staying open. It's something that without government input and, and stepping in with, you know, certain, uh, certain measures to be taken, it's going to be something that um, we, we don't know when the next uh, who on the street is going to close. It really does depend on that relationship. We've heard of, uh, you know, some landlords giving some kind of deferrals. Um, you know, in, in lucky cases, there's a, there's a small percentage of a rent abatement. But for the most part, it's, uh, there's not a lot of dialogue between landlord and tenant, and certainly not enough. Um, and that's where everyone is waiting at this point in time. So there's, there's a waiting game going on, both on the business side and on the landlord side. And as Philip mentioned before, a lot of these landlords are small businesses themselves. So it's, uh, you know, both landlord and tenant in some cases are in the same situation. And, and it's just, you know, waiting and nothing's happening yet. So we need to be able to uh, see some action here uh, or rent uh, for commercial rent. So you're asking, of, you're, you're saying that landlords and small businesses need attention from uh, the yeah. government. And in particular with this day drawing closer, that's the concern in highlighting, technically landlords could take back the property tomorrow, but you're looking for relief for both 
all of the fellow businesses in all the BIAs and all the business across the city, and as well for the landlords who have mortgages and other expenses to pay. That's correct. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I note that in your BIA, Dave, in Riverside BIA, there's 107 businesses and the, uh, 1,000 people are employed along Queen yeah. Street East. It's a very short strip. 75% uh, of those are in full-time work, but 40% of the businesses are in hospitality. And I'd say that you probably agree that they're really suffering right now. Anybody in a hospitality business um, has really been hard hit by the closures and the scale backs. Well, I'm in, I'm in hospitality myself, and this is something where uh, if you're able to stay open, and that's a big if, uh, you still need to lay off most of those employees. So this is something that's going to have a huge effect um, with so many of the businesses in our BIA being hospitality. Um, that's a lot of employees that have just been laid off and have been laid off for about three, four weeks now. Uh, it's something that we cannot um, maintain the level of employment without the kind of revenues that we normally have. So. Uh, and, and again, I mentioned we're one of the lucky ones. We're able to stay open at this point in time, but so many of them, it's not even, it's not even worth it. It's not a question of, uh, you know, can they stay open and make a go of it? It's just not enough revenue to pay what they need to pay, uh, both in fixed overheads as well as cost of goods and labor. Thank you. We have a question now from David Ryder from the Toronto Star. Uh, if the province says its revenues are down and it can't afford the measures you are seeking, what is your response? And I'll start with uh, you, Peter Tavins, because you are at the province. What, what do you say to that, if that's the response to these requests? Okay. Well, thanks very much for the question. I appreciate it. Um, the province will uh, see its revenues go down. I don't have any doubt of it. Uh, but the reality is that if we're going to have an economy that's functional, uh, if we're going to have neighborhoods that are protected, we're going to have to find this cash, just as we find it for so many other expenses uh, in the months and years to come. Uh, we did a calculation on the cost of this program uh, from a low of about 850 million up to a high of about 1.15 billion. Uh, I wanna say that right now the province spends five and a half billion dollars a year subsidizing hydro rates. Uh, if the priority is seen as one that has to be attended to, then the province is in a position to do that. And I, I would say we may hear many, many things from the Premier, um, but the reality is this program is critical and compared to many other priorities, it's one that's certainly affordable. Dave or Philip, would you like to uh, weigh in on that one? What are the consequences of saying uh, that they can't afford the measures? What would your response be to the Premier? Say, well, we simply can't afford to keep small business going in, in, in Ontario or in Toronto on on Danforth, on Queen, on Pape. What's your response? Well, I, I would say then that's that's basically making the decision that says that these we need to be okay then with these small businesses shutting down, and the neighborhoods as we know it uh, won't won't be the same. I mean, in our business, we're we're a real estate firm, so when we when we sell houses, we're not just selling homes; we're selling neighborhoods. People want to buy because they want to be along you know, the Danforth, or they want to be along Queen Street, or they want to be in the beach, they, they buy for those neighborhoods. And uh, the attraction is the small businesses. I know in our household, a lot of a lot of what we consume comes right from the right from the Danforth, I'm, I'm 30 second walk. And, you know, we 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 buy locally as much as possible. Um, and, and so if we don't find that funding somewhere, and if the province can't do it, then we need that advocacy at the federal level. Um, but if that isn't there, then we're basically saying that we're okay with small business shutting down and, and turning our back on those small, small local businesses. I can't imagine that's even an option. This is something where the economic impact of all those small businesses closing is going to far outweigh the economic impact of, um, you know, budgeting for support on this. Uh, the, the, the impact of the economy with small business is huge. I mean, this goes far beyond just the small business owners. It's something where um, like we mentioned, it's the employees, it's, it's the community itself, it's the property values, uh, it's the whole supply chain um, that gets affected with small businesses. I mean, it's, it's a huge component of our economy and, uh, and turning your back on small businesses is just not an option. I don't see that being uh, a viable thing. Thank you. Are there any more questions? Don't see any more from any of the uh, attendees. 
So we will uh, wrap this up this morning. And I want to thank everybody for attending this media conference, virtual media conference. I want to thank Philip Kosef from Danforth BIA, Dave Watson from the Riverside BIA, and Peter Tabins, local MPP, for bringing this issue and highlighting the real concerns of the small business community in this neighborhood. And I know that you your concerns are the same as the other four BIAs that exist in Toronto Danforth and the 83 BIAs that exist across the city of Toronto. And you have really told us this morning what is at stake if there's no relief. And that would be streets with closed, boarded up windows, empty storefronts, and very little chance of having those re-rented if you're not going to be able to afford to stay open. How is somebody else going to be able to afford to open a business after uh, this pandemic has been completed? So thank you very much. With that, I'm going to end this and uh, look forward to your survey, Philip, from Broadview Danforth in getting digging deeper into the consequences of non-payment of rent between now and the end of April. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a Thanks, Paula. Day. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Take care. Take care. Where is it? On the bottom right of the video. And me. It's right there. Oh, right.